Hey guys, Fall over here back with another Fallout 76 video, and today I got part 2 for the 76 things that I think Fallout 76 could use tweaked, changed, or added on the small side because small things can be quite cool sometimes. If you missed part 1 and that does interest you, I will have that linked somewhere on screen right now, and well, I mean, if you've seen part 1, then you know where this is going, so without further ado, let's just get the intro and get right into it. For number 26, I would like Power Armor to be displayed properly in your inventory. Because currently in game the way it is, is it is just a chassis with nothing on it, which I mean Yeah, it's it's power armor chassis. We could at least have some way of, of showing or telling what's on it. Because currently you have no idea what's on it until you place it down. Now you can rename it, but naming only gets you so far. So if you look off to the right you will see a current mod section. If they change that to just list off what is equipped to it. That could work if they just want to make that simple, or if they're able to have some sort of render that actually detects what pieces are on there and they show up properly. So a few entries ago, I mentioned how weapon leveling in this game is a little weird and I don't quite care for it. So another thing I would like to see that would counterbalance that is just have weapon and armor gear just have the level apply after picking it up. Because sometimes you'll kill like a level 50 enemy and it will drop level 50 gear. And it's like, yeah, you could do that. You can hold on to it for 20, 30, maybe even 40 levels if you're like level 10 or something. But why would you do that? It would be a lot simpler to just have weapon gear just apply a level when picking it up. That way it ensures that whenever you kill an enemy, you can actually use what it drops instead of being like, oh, I gotta store it for later. Number 28, Blue Ridge Caravan Quests. Boy, do I have a lot to say about these. Um, okay. So I'm gonna be honest, the Blue Ridge Caravan Quests are actually not too bad. They were added about a year ago at the time I'm making this and they are cool. You have a string of eight little tiny quests that you can do that have you learned about the different characters that are part of Blue Ridge, and Blue Ridge is a cool faction. The problem I have with it is they're labeled as daily quests, and that wouldn't be so bad if the quests themselves weren't four minutes each. Like, they are genuinely such nothing quests and you have to wait until the next day to literally play the next one in the quest line why now i get it you want to have that oh come back tomorrow it's a string of quests i actually like that conceptually but like why would you make that a, a real life 20 hour ish cooldown or or next day why would you have it like that? You could have simply just had it be like 20, maybe 40 minutes, because I think in game time it takes like 40 minutes to for like a full day and night cycle, which could have worked. I wouldn't mind having like 30 minutes to an hour cooldown on these quests if we needed one. But that's the thing. We don't need... What, like, why is there a timer in between these quests? I've never understood that, and I've never liked that. They're not bad quests, but they really, really do not need a timer in between each quest. So please, can we make these just actual side quests and just completely remove the timer? Or if you have to keep the timer, make it like 30 minutes to an hour? Like, nothing over an hour is, is acceptable for this. They, they, they're not worth waiting for the next day to do. Unless you really, really want that one blue combat armor paint. Other than that, it ain't worth it. For number 29, let's have a controversial one. Now, before I talk about this too much, the keyword here is some, not all. Because I know this would actually be an issue if everything were applied. So it would have to be a select few. But, I think having some atomic chop items applied to loot tables could be cool. What I mean by this is, maybe if you have Blood Eagle paints for certain weapons, they can drop when you kill Blood Eagles using those weapons, or if you 
have outfits that you own from the scoreboards or the atomic shop they have a chance to show up in suitcases something that makes it so that you can find some items oh, of course like i said not all of them because i know some items really just are not really lore friendly they're just kind of there because they feel like it but i do think having the chance to find some atomic shop stuff around if you own it i think that could be cool but it isn't necessary for number 30 let's get back to a less controversial one and a more annoying one paints so when you apply paints to an item in fallout 76 it will delete the item if you try to drop it which yeah i guess that's a fair way of not trading atomic shop items to other players but um but why though why can't you just take the paint off of an item that has a paint on it like you could literally just have a thing that runs in the background saying hey if this has a paint on it take the paint off and then drop the item i don't see why we can't have that because personally i've lost quite a few items to just dropping them with paints on accidentally so removing this would be nice now let's talk about gear first off i would like to start with 31 allow old gear to be traded when i say old gear i mean things like the crusader pistol or secret service armor any of the current non-tradable items that are probably like more than two years old i think the way this stuff could be handled i wouldn't mind if it was not tradable for like the first year just to make everyone you know have to work for it for a bit and then after that open it up to be tradable i think that could be fair although of course the way some weapons and gear are implemented that might not work properly but an idea but also with 32 i would also like to see the non-release survival weapons i would like to see those come back because there's actually quite a few uniques that are just not available anymore and some of them are actually pretty good so i think it would be cool to see those just thrown into daily ops or expeditions or just somewhere even events if if they have to for number 33 i think script machines should be able to take things with paint on them i don't actually know why they can't i feel like that's something they should be able to do but just like dropping items with paints on it it just won't let you put things in a script machine i don't know what it is with the atomic shop stuff but sometimes it just is integrated in a weird way for number 34 i think we could use at least one to four more legendary perk slots these have not been changed once since they were added and well i think it's time that we have the ability to have more personally all of my legendary perk slots are attributed to special stats so i don't really have the opportunity to play around with some of the other ones and also my character's over level a thousand i feel like i've earned the right to uh have a few more and if the way they want to implement it is that you can have the first six carry over to other characters like they do normally and maybe you can have four after that that don't transfer that you actually have to get on each character individually I could, i'd be okay with that for number 35 i think we should be able to reroll each legendary star on a gun individually i also once again do not see why we can't the way this menu is set up it genuinely makes it seem like they have something planned for this because now all the legendary effects are listed in their own like tab so i don't know if they have a plan for this to where you have to find them in like a mod form as like a reward from something that's upcoming but i mean either way i, I think some way of getting guaranteed or just allowing us to re-roll each star individually is definitely something i would like to see in this game because some effects sometimes you just have a hard time finding what you want and i think just having something easier could definitely make it just a lot less of a headache for number 36 we have something that might actually be a bug but it's only showing power armor in the power armor transfer menu i don't know why you see literally everything in this menu because if you look at like a display case like a magazine display rack or a bobblehead display case, like just anything you literally will only see what those things are specifically designed for so can we please get this for power armor it worked in fallout 4 so i don't once again know if this is a bug but for some reason you literally just see everything in this menu and i, I don't know number 37 search bars 
When it comes to games like Skyrim or Fallout 4 with mods, I very much enjoy having a search bar in those games. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Elder Scrolls Online also has search bars, but I'm not actually entirely sure on that one. I haven't played too much of it, but I think I remember seeing search bars in there somewhere. So I would like to see that treatment in 76. I don't care what we get them for, inventory obviously probably being the main one, but I wouldn't mind having like Atomic Shop or even like on the map, I wouldn't mind having a search bar to get to certain locations. Anywhere that search bars could be applied, I think could be a very nice change for this game. For number 38, we have changed the way instance joining works. Now, the way it works in game is whoever the team leader is, you are able to join their instance when they're inside of a quest area or just any instance interior. And that's fine. But over the years, I've slowly began to have an issue with this because you're only able to help the team leader. Sometimes the team leader is the one that should want to help the other players. Because team leaders, I mean, I'm not going to say they're always the highest level. Sometimes it could really just be a level two. But what if you are the team leader and you do want to help a level two? You kind of can't if they're in an instance and you're the team leader. You cannot promote them to leader if they're in an instance. And what if you're on a team with someone else that isn't the team leader, or neither of you are the team leader, and you can't really help them? So I think the way it should work is whenever someone joins an instance, they just join. But if you try to join that instance of someone else on your team while someone's in it, then a menu will pop up asking you which player, if someone or multiple people are in there, which one you would like to join. That's how I think it should be, so that way you can help other people without needing to have to be team leader. For number 39, I would like to change the cost for a few of the perk cards. This one I think goes without saying, but there are some perk cards in this game that for some reason cost two or three points to equip. And they're also, coincidentally, some of the actual worst perks in the game. I find that hilarious. Some of them are usable. They're either, they're either decent or complete garbage. That's literally how they are. So, I, like I said, I think this one goes without saying, <laughs> just change them to one. There's no reason why they should be more than one. They're not actually worth it. And while we're on the topic of perks, let's get to number 40, make awareness better. So awareness works exactly as it says on the card. It shows you your enemy's damage resistances and that's it. I don't hate that conceptually, but I think it would be cool if awareness also highlighted the enemy's weak point in a different color. I think that could be cool. Maybe whenever you hover over the enemy's weak point, uh, it'll change to red or something. And also, I think it would be cool if you, when you had awareness on, it would show you your enemy's exact health in numbers instead of the health bar, or like right under the health bar. For number 41, I would like to complain about energy gun receivers next. So the way the energy weapons have their receivers set up, the only way to increase their damage is through the prime receiver. And once again, just like in Fallout 4, or just like some of the previous entries, this was not the case in Fallout 4. The different receivers did upgrade the damage. And that's another thing that's just lost in this game, where it's like, why would you change it? It wasn't broke. Can we have receivers that actually add damage, please? I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some that add fire damage, but like... I'm gonna be honest, I don't think anyone actually cares about 11 fire damage. It's not going to help you out that much. So, I think it would be cool if we had some receivers that are actually worth putting on your gun outside of prime receivers because not everyone has access to a prime receiver. That and also, 
trying to keep an automatic gun with prime receivers fed can sometimes be a bit annoying. And while we're on the topic of the energy ones, I would also like to just put a nice bonus here at the end of this section. A lot of other guns like the LMG and um, I think the 50 cal also kind of just have this issue where they don't have any better receivers other than the prime receiver. For number 42, I think it would be cool if they added a lobby slash team chat that was accessible through the world activity menu. If you look here, that you will see a feature and an all section. And I think if they wanted to, they really could just put a chat menu here as well, where you could interact with either the entire lobby or your team, either or. And it would be a cool way to get people to interact with each other, or if they were looking to buy or sell something, or just look for help with a quest, or people to run expeditions or daily ops with. I think that could be cool. For number 43, I think we need some responders and some Blue Ridge Caravan random encounters. I don't know what it was with those two factions in particular, but when they were added, they kind of just... I don't want to say they were like just half implemented, but they might have honestly just been half implemented. So Blue Ridge Caravan over, well, since it was added in Wastelanders, has kind of just grown to become a bigger faction over time. And to show that they are gaining presence in the region, I think it would be cool to have some random encounters that reflect that. And also same thing with the responders where they're supposed to be these people that travel around and help everybody. And um, I'm going to be honest, they are only in the White Springs. So... I don't think they're going to help anyone out if they do not leave the White Spring. Just saying. Now, I know technically Minerva is a Blue Ridge worker outside of the main Blue Ridge areas, but, like, you're not going to just come across Minerva. Minerva still has, you know, set spawns. So, for Blue Ridge and responders, I do think they really could use some random encounters. For number 44, I think it would be a lot easier if we just had a giant change where we just made all interiors instanced. I think this could be beneficial, not so that it would be easier to just implement quests into these areas later, but mostly because it would just help with consistency. You see, if you ever look up a guide on YouTube or maybe the follow wiki where you can find an item or a creature, Sometimes you'll get there and you will not find what you're looking for because someone else will have been there and they would have cleared it out. And I think if we just make interiors instanced all of them, then anything in an interior just completely will be farmable. And it will help with, the, uh, once again, consistency. So that way, anything that can or should be farmable could then be added to an instance if it needs to be but just allowing it to be easy and consistent to not have to worry about other people taking your stuff if you just didn't get there first for number 45 we have at player housing and key locations such as foundation creator fort atlas the likes and i'm gonna be 100 honest i'm actually very baffled that still to this day bethesda never added any sort of player housing in any of these locations like that seems like such an easy thing to do i mean this game has a build mechanic all they have to do is literally just add an empty room and then let everyone else go wild with it can we have this please like i, I don't think it'd be that hard you literally would just have to put just i don't know like a square room in each of these that you can have i don't think it'd be that hard but mm, i don't really work there so i don't actually know how hard creating instances actually is but once again, like, th these are very cool locations, but once you do all the quests and stuff, you don't really have a reason to go back, and I think it would also help out that if you happen to be on a server where all of your camp spots were just taken, this would also just be a guaranteed spot where you at least always have something. For number 46, I think we need to reinforce a few enemies in Volo 76, starting with the Sentry Bot and Death Claws. Yeah, in this gameplay footage that you're seeing, I literally kill a sentry bot in one hit. If you shoot the fusion core, you do an insane amount of damage. And they learned from this, actually, because when you do the event test your metal, this is actually reinforced. 
So I think just applying this to all sentry bots could be cool. It doesn't have to necessarily be removed. Like the multiplier doesn't have to be removed, but if you could reinforce it and then maybe if you break the armor, it'll let you do more damage. That's fine. Similar to how the protections are where they have head armor and then you can break that to maybe get a, a damage boost to the head. I actually don't remember how the, that works, but that's definitely one of them. And also death claws. They are insanely weak in this game because the belly is really easy to hit. Like, really, really easy to hit. And since this game's VAT is just aimbot, yeah, you're not going to struggle to take death claws out anytime soon. These two enemies, which are very formidable in other Fallout games, happen to be this game's two easiest enemies. Other than maybe a Bloodfly. Next, I would like to talk about a build mode feature that I would like to see, and that is the ability to scrap rocks, trees, and other things such as cars. The things that you build a camp around and then you realize there's going to be a tree or a rock that gets in your way, and you can delete it. Now, there are items in Fallout 76, or not really items, but objects in Fallout 76, world objects, that if you build over top of them, they will disappear until you leave the server and reload and if nothing's blocking it they will come back that's fine i guess but i think also having a more permanent way of getting rid of these so that way you don't just have random trees and rocks in places you don't want them i think that'd be cool because sometimes you just sometimes you just get a rock you don't want you know they're just sitting there and there's really anything you can do about it Number 48. Oh boy. Uh, do you remember the Blue Ridge rant that I had earlier about uh, not liking how the quests were set up? I'm about to go on another rant that is very similar to that, but this time for the Alien Blaster. And the Alien Disintegrator, and potentially the Alien whatever the melee weapon is. I don't remember and I don't care because it's a melee weapon and... This game has, like, actually 70 melee weapons. So, there is a loading screen tip that says the Alien Blaster is a powerful beam energy weapon that is capable of disintegrating foes. There are three complete lies in that sentence, and that is the entire cause of me wanting to make this section. The Alien Blaster used to be one of the best weapons in Fallout, but is completely butchered in this game. The Alien Blaster is first off... Okay, okay, let's just address the elephant in the room. This thing shoots blue orbs? This gun has never in any of the games been a beam energy weapon. I don't know who wrote this, but they're a complete liar. Secondly, this thing is bugged and for some reason and that's why i was talking about the alien disintegrator as well it cannot disintegrate enemies i do excuse me that was one of the like main key features of the alien blaster this thing literally no matter how many criticals you get how many enemies you kill you cannot disintegrate enemies <laughs> what do you mean so this also never worked and lastly powerful this is the weakest pistol in the game. I actually have pipe weapons that do more damage than this. And that is sad. This gun is terrible. And unfortunately, that has slightly rubbed off onto the alien disintegrator as well. I think both of these need a buff, and that's really what this section is about. The alien gear in this game is atrocious. And is not good at all. So remember, the Alien Blaster is a powerful beam energy weapon that is capable of disintegrating foes. For number 49, I think we could use an apply paint to full set option whenever you're painting armor or power armor, or maybe even weapons. I don't actually know how they would implement this one, but I do think having the option to just completely paint an entire set of power armor or armor could be nice, because sometimes you may or may not accidentally own half of the atomic shop, and having to scroll through a lot of paints can get tedious and 
just sometimes if you forget the name of the paint is a bit annoying so being able to just have an option where you can just apply the paint to the entire side could be cool instead of having to apply the paint individually to each limb and then deciding whether or not you like the way it looks and then risk having to go back and completely changing it because one piece wasn't to your liking. For number 50, I think this game could use a little bit of drop consistency update, and what I mean by that is sometimes you'll kill a super mutant or a scorched and they'll drop something completely different than what they're using. So in this gameplay, you'll see that yeah, some of the super mutants are dropping the weapons they have, but on this guy right here, he's got a hunting rifle, and he literally drops a laser gun. Like, that's not what he was holding. I don't know how easily this would be able to be changed, but drop consistency definitely could be a just nice quality of life change. That way, when you kill an enemy, you get what they drop. I don't know if this is something where they'd have to just make it so that whenever they drop a gun, it just disappears and you have to get that gun directly from their inventory instead of picking it up off the ground because the way it works currently is sometimes enemies will drop their gun and also have their inventory to loot so sometimes you could just get two guns from them which is a thing but also if possible i think it would also be nice to pair this with maybe having enemies use guns with random attachments and drop with random attachments because Seeing every single NPC in this game specifically use the short barreled no stock hunting rifle with nothing on it is very cursed and annoying to see because like bruh it's the hunting rifle. This thing literally barely fits in their hand. It literally looks like they're about to shatter it into pieces because of how small it is. So I think some guns just look different it would just make the game feel slightly more immersive and i do think this could be one of those changes where it's not huge it probably won't actually mean anything at all but it would just be nice so there you have it that is part two that is me complaining about 25 more things over the course of probably 25 ish minutes and if you want to see more i probably have the first part up on screen right now linked if not it will probably be in a few seconds somewhere around here and uh, with that being said, that's about all I got for the second part, and the third part will be out soon, and I hope you have a wonderful evening, morning, or night, depending on when you watch this, and I will see you next time. Later.